So I just wanted to go over outliers a little bit with you. So here I have some st statistics from a recent survey. I took, uh, you probably participated in this. We have gender and I chose the usual hours of sleep in a night. Uh, calculated some standard summary statistics. So those are highlighted in green and blue here. So the mean and standard deviation are related to each other because we need the mean to calculate standard deviation. And the quartiles, min, median, and max, those are all percentiles. So they're pos uh, positional uh, references in the data when it's sorted. And I have the data sorted here by sleep. To play with outliers, we have a couple of things that are disposable. We've looked before at using the IQR, so extending the box plot to uh, look a little bit on each side of Q1 and Q3. So remember, we take the, the interquartile range, the, the width of the box, we multiply it by 1.5, so we make it 150% bigger, and we take that new span and we look to the left of Q1 by that amount and to the right of Q3. Uh, so for example, Q1 is six here. If I made two 50% bigger, that would be three. And so if we take a three, that extended IQR away from Q1, that gives us a lower fence of three. And if we take that extended IQR, right, the 150% of two, and we add that to Q3, eight plus three gives me 11 as that outer fence. So let's uh, do a quick visual of that by throwing this into stat key so I can get a box plot. So copy, and go over to stat key, Let's spell stat key today, that's better. Lock five is the group that puts this out and we want one quantitative variable. Then we just edit and replace whatever data set they have here with whatever we want. Now my data set is just the numbers I have no header row and there's no first column identifying. So if I had copied the male female, then that would be a first column as identifiers for each of these numbers, but I don't have that. And I don't have a label for the top. So uncheck the correct boxes and we run the box plot. So here we can see our interquartile range goes from six to eight, so that's two. We make that 50% bigger and then we take that distance of three and we scoot to the left of Q1 and to the right of Q3. And so in this case, by that rule, there are no outliers. So we've got the minimum and that lower fence match up. We're not beyond the lower fence. And the max is less than the upper fence. So all of the data is within these fences. So that method says there's no outliers. Now there's another method that uses standard deviation. So again, this is one way to talk about spread by using the interquartile range. Another way to talk about spread of the data is by standard deviation. So standard deviation is the average spread from the mean, at least one way to measure that. And so here I'm looking two standard deviations to the left of the mean and two standard deviations to the right. So remember our notation for the mean of a sample is x with a bar over it. So I often will refer to that as bar x. So I have the mean minus two standard deviations. So that means I took this 6.86 and I subtracted two times the standard deviation. So that's a lower bound for outliers using this other technique. And then I took that mean and I added two standard deviations to it. And that gives me what we call that upper bound. So any data that's outside of two standard deviations is considered an outlier. So here I have one number that's below the mean. So let's highlight that. So that's related to these numbers here. And I have, uh, let's see, 9.58. Yeah, so there's three numbers that are above 9.58. So what we would say then is that there are some people who sleep an unusually long amount of time compared to the rest of the group. And there's at least one person who sleeps an unusually short amount of time compared to the rest of the group. So we have four unusual values based on the two standard deviation rule. There were no unusual values based on the IQR rule. 
is what we find in this situation. And then from there, we would go investigate. Okay, so what's going on with this person here? Was that a mistake? Do they really get by on three hours of sleep? Um, the upper one, you know, a lot of people slept nine hours is what they claim. So 10, hmm, that doesn't seem too unreasonable. Uh, but I'm a little concerned about the three down here compared to the rest. So that I'll have to investigate um, further. But this is what statistics tells us right now as far as outliers. That's it. Take it easy. Do good math. Bye-bye.